Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program where we are currently ready to head out on our Moho flyby here. This craft is a lot of overkill for a lot of things. We'll see how overkill it is for Moho. I thought that our last Moho mission was really overkill and it wasn't. So we'll see what happens with this one. I'm not going to make any predictions on that. Now the sun is out over here so we're going to want to do a prograde burn around here if we want to head in towards Moho. So something along the lines of this. Hmm. That was exciting. Okay, we're going to need to wait in orbit, it looks like. This is going to be a pretty long burn, most likely. That's not shocking. Let's go ahead and wait in orbit. And let's see. This is a moon encounter. That's very rude. That is very, very rude. Okay. If we were to just hard burn here, this is like 2000 Delta V. We still have a moon encounter here, actually. Do we need to wait another orbit? Maybe. The moon is in a very awkward spot for us right now. So let's try adding in another orbit here. That's better. So this is overshooting. I'm not shocked about that. Let's uh, bring this back out. And that's a moon encounter. Oh, boy. <laughs> moon, why do you have to be here? Okay, we'll add in another orbit. How's that looking? That's a curb and escape there. We're going to need to... Pull this back this direction a bit. And if we were to set Moho as a target, what would this end up looking like in terms of getting there right now? It'd probably be pretty bad, right? Yeah, definitely. So we know that we're not in the correct inclination. That's fine. We can position it somewhere around here. And then we can circularize-ish that. Ish. That should be reasonably fine. And that doesn't give us a moon encounter. Okay. Let's head on over to our node. A anytime you want to start turning, Mechjeb. I think it is turning. It is. It's just very slow. Okay. So this is going to be a long burn time. Luckily, we don't have to be giga, giga accurate with it. But we'll just get into position here. This is going to be a couple of orbits around Kerbin. So we'll just warp forward a little bit here. There we go. And we will commence our burn as soon as Kerbin properly loads in 50 seconds. 10 seconds. Warped a little bit more aggressively than I was looking to, but we're burning. Excellent. So we're going to burn off the remainder of this fuel here. And we have 12,500 Delta V to get this done. This is just a flyby. Surely that'll work, right? Right. I'm sure this will work. I think. <laughs> I hope. I wish. So we're heading on out here, and once we're through the mainsail portion of this burn, it's going to be considerably, considerably slower. We'll definitely want a physics warp at that point. The main issue that I have right now is a lack of this drogue shoot, but I think we'll be okay without it. We're landing a relatively light body here. We've got our main shoot. We've got a single drogue shoot. That's probably enough, but we'll see. If we have to, we can enter orbit here and strap another one on, but hopefully we don't need to do that. Okay, so that's flame out, and let's physics work. Oh, wow, that's very uh, rocky. I didn't expect to be bending like this up here. How are we on just kill rot? I expected this to be stable because of these struts. What if we turn off this gimbal? Are we over gimbaled? No. I think the real problem is this reaction wheel up here. 
Yes. That reaction wheel is the big problem. So we can turn that back on once we lose this reaction wheel. Okay. That looks good. Let's return to physics warp now that we're no longer rocking the boat. Excellent. This is still going to be like a six minute, six minute burn here. So the, the burn in warp is going to be over a minute. It's definitely a hefty one. No doubt about that. But we're just pushing this right on through here. We've got that encounter with the moon here. We'll be bypassing it soon. Ish. I mean, we're not burning to specifically interact with the moon here. So it's not going to be a particularly efficient moon transfer, right? We're just trying to push on out of here and not intersect the moon. I don't want the moon to significantly change our trajectory. So that's our goal right now. And we can see that currently we don't actually know what our trajectory is going to look like. And you might ask why. That is because of the moon encounter. Once the moon encounter goes away here, then we'll be able to see our trajectory and make a determination on when to end this burn outside of the maneuver system. We're going to want to largely circularize with Moho here. And because Moho's in a pretty elliptical orbit, that means that it's going to be interesting to do. But we are able to get a lot of our expensive burn portion done here, which is helpful. This is definitely a more efficient way to get to Moho. No doubt about that. We still have that moon encounter. We've still got that moon encounter. And the periapsis is currently dropping. Hilarious. Okay. We are about to finish up this burn. Let's come out of the physics warp here, and we'll call that good enough. We still have that moon encounter. It shouldn't substantially change our trajectory. I don't like you being here, moon. But it shouldn't substantially change our trajectory. So we'll load into the, the moon's sphere of influence, and then we will warp on out of the moon's sphere of influence just to fly by. It doesn't even curve our trajectory at all. It will be a very slight change to our trajectory over what it would have been. But let's see what that's looking like. That's fine. I'm not concerned about that. So we're going to be reaching the ascending node next, correct? Correct. The ascending node is our next position. So we should definitely do an inclination change there. Seven degrees. That's a pretty hefty inclination change. Okay, that'll do. A thousand meters per second for that one. But we should have the delta V to pull that one off. So let's just get oriented around here for that burn. And we'll start that burn in about 90 days. There we go. We are now oriented. Goodbye, Kerbin. Goodbye, Moon. Hello, Sphere of Influence of the Sun. Excellent. And we're just warping right along here. So this is going to be about another five minute burn, which will be a relatively hefty one. There's our Eve observations coming through and some Ike ones still coming. I haven't actually investigated what's going on with Duna at this point. I'm not sure why it's not transmitting back. Because it feels like it should be. Regardless, we can always reset it up if we have to. We're going to start our inclination change here in three, two, one, and mark. And off we go. Cool. We'll physics warp this burn and hopefully get through it relatively quickly. I mean, it's still going to be a slightly over one minute burn in real time here. Yeah. It, these are pretty hefty. Like, this is a thousand meter per second burn. This engine is very efficient, but it's also very, very low thrust weight. So it takes a while. But overall, this seems completely fine to me. 
And on the way back, we'll probably also have to inclination change to get a rendezvous with Kerbin. We'll check the timing on it, but hopefully that, that'll be a thing. We could enter Orbit of Moho. We've done that before. So we may enter Orbit of Moho just to control how we're getting flung back to Kerbin a little bit better. That's probably worthwhile, actually. We've got a lot of DV here left. We've still got 9,500, right? So I'm not too concerned about our DV at this juncture. We've got like still two thirds in these outer tanks. So we're doing pretty well on that front. 150 meters per second to go in our inclination change. Make that 100. And 50 meters per second. Let's come out of the physics warp. Let's get this last little bit done here. Three, two, one, and engine shutdown. We'll call that good. Should be good enough. Yeah, that's good enough. So from here, we want to enter a circularization around Moho. What's that actually going to look like? Like that timing is going to be a little wacky, right? Yes, yes it is. So that would be somewhere around here. But I'd really want it to be more like over here. We're overshooting it if we're going to do that. And we would need to do some radial burning. And have it be something quasi-awkward like this. That'll burn out basically all of our side tanks. But that also means that the actual transfer to Moho will be very, very quick and easy. Alternatively. This is a lot of radial that I tossed in there. That's almost like, actually, that's a whole lot of radial. Let's ditch that for the moment. And let's think instead about a burn that would... Well, maybe we just go at the periapsis and circularize there. It doesn't have to be perfect, right? Actually, hang on a moment. This is an intercept here. It's not a great intercept. We're going to have a lot of speed still. If we were going to not circularize... This would be kind of decent if we're going to not enter orbit. So as a hypothetical from there, if we were to burn at this periapsis prograde, as a hypothetical, that definitely pushes us out towards Kerbin very nicely. So then if we were to set Kerbin as our target there, I mean, we're way off in terms of inclination. We can make an inclination change on the way back. So I would want this to be like halfway between between Eve and Kerbin, something like this. That'd be about 3,000 DV or 5,000 total. That should work. Yeah, we can fine tune that a little bit once we once we have this burn done. So let's get set up for this. I like this encounter. I think this is a decent one. We're not necessarily trying to enter orbit, so this is okay. We're just getting a flyby, and that's all we need for our contract here. We just need to return to Kerbin from a flyby of Moho. So I think that's fine. Let's begin our warp here. That's going to be in about 50 days. And then our actual burn here is going to be pretty lengthy again. I mean, this is a 2,000 meter per second burn. Cool. We'll warp forward a little bit further here. We want to hit this reasonably accurately. Our low thrust to weight shouldn't matter too much in this context. Burn starting up now. Let's enter our physics warp. Cool. So this burn is going to be a bit of a long one. I think I'm going to cut this burn out. We'll be back towards the end. See you guys in just a moment. Okay, so here we are pretty close to the end of the burn. 
fantastic. We've got about 150 meters per second to go in it. Let's come out of the physics warp. And we are going to just... Actually, I came out of that physics, physics warp a little bit early, didn't I? <laughs> We've got about 10 seconds left in this burn. So let's let that finish up. And then we're going to see how we did. So far, we're not there yet. Okay, we definitely want to push this over like that. Cool. So, from here, we're getting a nice long flyby. We are going to be in this sphere of influence for plenty of time. No concerns there. And we don't actually need to enter orbit, so I'm not going to do that. We're just going to, at this periapsis, get, give ourselves a nice, solid prograde burn. And this is already throwing us out reasonably well. We're just going to push up over this direction. Timing-wise, what would this look like? And I don't really think we should do any inclination change here. Like, I think that's probably a really, really dumb idea. Yeah, that, that's a pretty dumb idea, I think. But let's, let's get rid of that. We now know the timing is interesting out over here anyway. So let's park about here. We'll get our inclination change and our circularization done out this direction, and then we'll just do a standard intercept of Kerbin from there. That should be absolutely fine. Unless we just happen to be in a time when just pushing out our periapsis here would do the trick. But it's a little bit unlikely. So we're going to align for this burn. We're not going to do the burn immediately, though. What we need to do first is we need to warp over to here. So we've got about 80 days here. We're going to need to do a bunch of science. And we're going to collect all of this science, of course. So we're going to store the science and bring it back to Kerbin. And we should be coming up on Moho soon. There it is. Hi, Moho. You're looking very dark from this angle, but that's fine. We'll grab all of the data that we can, which we have some of this that we transmitted back already, but we'll grab all of this data. We'll open this guy up. And I'd like to collect our data. Actually, the data collection is up here. So we'll collect all of that. We could grab an additional gravity scan. And that's probably the best thing that we're going to get there. So let's have Luke Kerman EVA. And we are now... Actually, hop back in. We are not at the node. Let's just position on the node here. There we go. Luke, now you can EVA. Grab your EVA report and then let go. And we're just going to sail on down over this direction. Where's that mystery goo? There it is. If I can get my bearings here. There we go. We will restore that. Restore this. And observe the mystery goo. Keep that for now. Conduct the material study. We're going to collect this data. We're going to collect that data as well. Restore it again. And we'll run this a third time. And that'll be stored here. This is the best that we're going to get for this data. So we're going to keep all of that experiment. And we'll close these doors beautiful and we'll head back in cool and any of that data that we can grab we will so we'll get all of that data collected we do need to be back on the node here there we go and let's do our escape burn so we're just going to push here towards Kerbin what is our 6.4 degrees. Okay, that's not as bad. It's not a full 7 degree burn. So that's good in terms of DV here. We're definitely going to be burning off these side tanks. So let's warp forward a little further. 30 seconds. 20. 10. And 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Beautiful. And let's physics warp. So we do have a good amount of time left in these tanks yet. We're not ready to detach them at this moment. Yeah, we've got a lot of DV still. We've still got 7,000 DV, remember. And we're on our way home now. We're at Moho, but we are headed home. So this is looking good, Delta V-wise. I think we've got more than enough. I really, really do. So this is looking fine. 
2300 meters per second to go here though so we're definitely going to be getting a lot of burn heading over this direction we're of course burning from the dark side here to push out away from the sun so that'll be great 70 seconds of burn left in our side tanks cool only about 200 meters per second left in them at this point but they are of course designed to be dropped here in space 10 seconds left let's come out of the physics warp two one zero those tanks are dry and we ditch them beautiful so that brings us up to 3.11 from 2.01 our thrust to weight is much much higher now that's great that's a lot of weight that we just shed unfortunately it's also space junk that we'll uh, have to deal with via detracking eventually but that's absolutely fine so this is looking good we do still have about another two minutes of burn time left here let's go back into physics warp and let's get ourselves this burn completed beautiful we can see that we're already passing the orbit of eve and that's looking absolutely great 600 meters per second to go left in this burn 400 300 200 100 it's accelerating 60 meters per second 50 40 30 20 10 and we'll call that good enough okay so our thrust weight is up to 3.77 that's a big increase to be clear it's probably going to go back down somewhat when we go over the sun i think but the ascending node is our next target here so we're going to hit the ascending node and we need to change this by burning anti-normal about there 1392 that's a little bit more dv than i was expecting that inclination change to be out of curiosity if we were to skip that inclination change and just push this out what is that looking like okay that's pretty hefty on its own there obviously we're not going to be particularly accurate in terms of the inclination change we really do need to do the inclination change so let's do that we should have the delta v to make this happen though i really do think that but it's going to be a little close so we bring this down to something like this 1391 okay so that's going to be about a two minute burn here in about 48 days we'll get that inclination change done And then we'll look to see what our best intercept is our best intercept may not in fact be what it looks like here it's very possible so i'm going to continue to warp us forward a little bit uh we're in physics warp let's reg no we're still in physics warp let's regular warp there we go that feels more correct 20 seconds 10 and three two one mark cool let's physics warp on our way through here and we'll see what this intercept looks like there's a few options that we can go for depending on what the timing looks like we can try to go for arrow capture here and that's probably going to be our best bet in all honesty so 30 seconds left here 20 10 seconds left in this burn coming out of the physics warp three two one and zero okay that should do the trick yes indeed now the next question is what if we were to burn here that timing is non-great but you can see that's a lot cheaper if we were willing to wait alternatively if we were to do this we'd have a lot less speed going in 
Yeah, really what we'd want to do is circularize here. So we do something like this. How much DV would we have left? We would end up burning about a thousand of this. So that would be like 700 DV. Which is manageable. That is manageable. So that is a theoretical possibility. That said, if I can select this maneuver, let's delete some of these maneuvers. Our best bet really would be to do this. Absolutely. How many orbits would that be? Actually, that's pretty close right there. If we were to toss in some radial, this would be quite a lot of radial. But if we were to toss in a little bit of radial over here, that gives us an encounter. And it's not a half bad encounter either. So we would bring this in to be... something kind of like this-ish. We would, of course, want to be coming in a little lower than this. It's very sensitive. But we'd want to come in something kind of like... Ooh, that's an impact trajectory there. Okay, so we can work with that. We'd want to come in something like... Boy, that's sensitive. Something along the lines of, oof, oof, 18 kilometers here. Something like this would do the trick. And we have plenty of Delta V left for a radial retrograde burn. No, I think this is good. I think we do it. However, it is time to put a cut in here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. I was hoping to get this whole mission done this episode, but that didn't end up happening. This burn is going to be in a while, so we'll, we will start the warp, and we will start next episode with the recovery of this. You can leave your offerings to the Engagement Gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and a very special thank you to all of the channel members for making this video possible, including ALS Gamer, James, Shadow Wolf, Mlohan80, Rogue Corvid, Kentogan, Andy Magar, Spark Martin News, Nick Smarty, Dimitri H, Punching the Microphone, Soccerman12 UK, and all the rest. And of course, you. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, you can click the join button down below the video, and as always, I will see you all next time.